this congregation on this morning. I can honestly say God has been good. Yeah. Since I've been here, I've watched God turn things around for people. Yeah. I know that we serve a great God. Yes. Hallelujah. And we know that we serve God on some good soil here. Where he performs miracles. Where he turns things around. Where he heals bodies. Where he saves souls. Where he brings families back together. Where he restores minds. Where he heals bodies. He opens up arteries. He heals diabetes. He heals cancer. He heals mental illness. He heals whatever you put on the altar. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's a great God.
with whoever's do we just can we just stay here pastor I don't know what y'all need from the Lord on this morning but I tell y'all there's a sweet sweet spirit in this place on this morning and I guarantee you if you just touch him
chapter 11, verse 22. You may be seated. I'm going to come back to the text in a minute. But thank you, Holy Ghost, for letting me stand one more time. Speak, Holy Ghost, to your people. Give me the words to say at this very hour. God, without you, I realize I'm nothing to God. For you are the vine, we are your branches. I abide in you, you abide in us. But without you, I can do nothing. Have your way in this place again, dear God. With your word of God, and move in this place through the word of God. Change our lives, change our thinking. We love you in Jesus' holy name, we pray. You ask me to let him hear what the Spirit says to the church. Amen. 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 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 22 through 33. And today I want to talk about persevering through pain for Christ. Persevering through pain for Christ. My subtopic is, don't quit now, the pain has just started. Don't quit now, the pain has just started. Don't quit now. The pain has just started, has just begun. You may be seated. Persevering through pain for Christ. How many of you can say that you have persevered thus far through pain for Christ? Even when your body tells you you don't feel like going. Even when your body tells you you don't feel like running. <laughs> Even when your body tells you you to stay laying down in the bed and stay yeah. asleep. Relax. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but what? the Holy Spirit Come on. prevails yeah. and say, no, son, you or daughter, you gotta keep running for Christ. It's something about the pain that makes you want to stop. Yeah. Pain brings problems. Pain brings struggle, pain, brings adversity, pain, brings hurt, pain, sometimes brings destruction, pain, brings sickness, pain, brings drama, but the thing about pain, pain birth blessings, how many believe that, it does all those horrible things, but at the end of the day, pain birth blessings. How many believe it? It's something about a woman that's in here, Sister Ross know where I'm going already. That's impregnated. And she's carrying a seed for nine months. And she's in pain. I don't know the pain. I can't relate because I'm a man. Come on, come on. Man, we can't relate, but I can see it on your face. That's an old song that says written all over your face. You don't have to say a word. <laughs> so I can see it on her face that she was in pain. Yeah. Yeah. Though she's beautiful, when impregnated, things have changed, but still glow is still there. But it's something about a woman in birth pain. Until that embryo comes forth. She can't quit yet. Because if she want to quit, then the baby would die. And she might die too. So in labor, doing labor, she got to push. The doctor said, oh, hold up now. Wait a minute, catch your breath and push. He tells her again, while she in pain, catch your breath. And push. Oh my God. It's a beautiful thing. But in a way, it's really not. <laughs> While I'm getting dizzy and woozy and start sweating, my head is being squeezed with tremendous pressure. <laughs> and I'm trying not to really look. Because through pain comes a blessing. 
a blessing. And that's what I want to talk about. Apostle Paul, he said, I must persevere through the pain. I must press towards the mark of the high calling, which is Christ Jesus. Now, during the church of Corinth, during this time in Corinth, this was one of the worst churches, if not the worst, that he had to birth. Oh, this is a rough church. They gave him hell on top of hell. Trouble on top of trouble. Oh, my God. They gave him problems on top of problems. Sometimes the church can be a problem. But they gave him problems on top of problems. Oh, man. This church was something else. He started this church. He actually wrote three letters to this church. But we only have two in the Bible. But he wrote three. And Paul begins to talk. To these people, because now he has to defend his apostleship. Right. Because he has to remember in chapter 12, when we go ahead from chapter 11, it talks about how God put a thorn in my flesh. Yeah, 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 yeah. He said, A buffet. Yes, he said, They buffet me. Yeah, yeah. That means, what that means in Greek is that was a stake yeah. in his flesh, not a thorn, but really a stake. In his flesh, because they impaled him with the stake, because they tore down his apostleship. Not only that, but they was tearing down the church. Yeah. You can you can hit Paul with everything you have. Yeah. You can beat him. You can scourge him. You can whip him. You can stone him. But that wasn't the pain. Come on, come on, come on. The pain was the church. Yeah. That's the kind of heart a pastor or a, a leader, an elder, should have for the church. For God's people. That's right. That's right. Not for the building. That's it, not the building. <laughs> for God's people. That's right. That's right. That's, That's right. why I study so hard and I work so hard in the Word of God. Studying and studying and studying day and night for you so you can know the Word of God. Yeah. For the past three or four, I've been studying and studying the Word of God so you can know the Word of God. That's right. That's right. And trust me, baby. Yeah. This is hard work. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if you've ever been to school before. You had to study for a test. Come you had, on, you had, I used to tell them when I call advisor, I say, now look here, advisor. <laughs> I know you're down. Scale for me for this class. Don't give me, give me one hard, just give me one extensive hard class. And I'm going to have to do an eight-page, ten-page essay. Don't give me two of them on, at the man. same time. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That ain't going to work. Yeah. Because I'm on the board. I'm on call. And they're calling me. I don't know when I'm going to go to work. I don't know when I'm going to sleep. So I don't know when I'm going to study. And they just laugh. They say, yes, sir, Mr. Rose. <laughs> but the thing about this thing, about birthing a blessing in pain, is amazing. Paul, Paul, he says, in that 22nd verse, he says, are they Hebrews in the 11th chapter? So I am. Second Corinthians, so am I. That's it. He said, they're Hebrews, so am I. That's He's it. trying to put a difference and a similarity between the false prophets and him. The false prophets already came in the church and taught and tried to, and they really got to the people, a lot of them. That's why you got to be strong in Christ. And that's why I teach so hard so you can be like noble Marines and know the word for yourself. So when somebody get up here and get to preaching something that ain't of God, you know already, and you should call it out. That's what they used to do in the church, they'll call it out. They say, no, that's not true. The word of God says this. That's how it used to be. That's it. That's it. That's set you down. Yeah, set you down real quick. <laughs> and he says, so am I. He said, are they seed of Abraham? He says, so am I. Are they ministers of Christ? I speak as fool, as a fool. I am more in the labors, more abundant. Yeah. that? He says, more abundant I labor. He did. He labored more, way harder than the other apostles that walked with Jesus. He said, I labored more abundantly. That's it. That's Though he came in way later. In stripes above measure. Y'all hear that? In stripes. In the lashings. He's going to get to it. But I want y'all to see his suffering. And I want to encourage you. In stripes above measure. In prisons more frequently. In deaths more often. 24th verse. From the Jews five times I received 40 stripes minus one. My God. In Jewish custom. When it used to be in the Old Testament. There used to be 40 stripes. So what they did in the New Testament, because some people go overboard with the whoopings. Y'all yeah. <laughs> yeah, know what I'm talking about. My grandmama go overboard with the whoopings. I know I was bad. I know you was bad, but God! 
I said, Grandma. I said, Do you ever talk? He said, No, I talk while I whoop. I said, What? Just talk to me sometime. Maybe I'll get it. He said, No, you ain't gonna get it. You're gonna get it down there and it's gonna travel. Up there. But they gave 40 stripes in the Old Testament. So when the New Testament came, they said, no, we'll do 39. That way we'll have a stopping point. In case we do super exceed that 39. Yeah, yeah, yeah. At least we'll give you 40. <laughs> but understand what he was hooked with. He just had this leather strap. These leather straps just everywhere dangling. And he had metal sharp edges on the end. And they were whipped him and snatched back. So it's snatching the flesh off his body. So 39 times, how many times he said he did? Three times. He's been whipped. 39 times. Minus, he said 40 times minus one. But he still persevered for God. They whipped him, but the next day he was on a journey. And he walked hundreds of miles to the next place to preach the word again. That's what I'm called to do. That's what every elder is called to do. Every preacher, every pastor is preach the word of God and teach the word of God. Whether in pain or whether feeling good. That's it, that's it, that's it. That's our job, ministers. Our job is to preach the word of God. It don't matter how you look. It don't matter how you feel. Your job is to preach the word of God. You can carry titles. But baby, I'm telling you, my title don't make me. My God, my job is to preach the word of God. You can be an evangelist, but are you evangelizing? You can be a preacher, a regular preacher, but are you out there preaching? You can be a minister, but are you out there ministering? Your job is to minister and preach the word of God to everybody, not just in here. I thank God for letting me be a vessel on my job. I, man, I thank God. People come and you pray. To, and it's not about, I'm not boasting in myself. But in God, because even in my infirmity, there's a lot of times at work I don't feel good. My sciatica bother me. Or maybe I'm dizzy. But they don't know that. But they ask me, Pastor, can you pray for me? Sure. I thank God for making him be a living vessel because bottom line, we are servants of God. That's, it, that's, that's it. what we are, servants. That's, that's it. And we do the will of God. We're servants. Yeah, we yeah. serve. Yeah, yeah. But it says like three times I was beaten with rods. Uh -huh. So once I was stoned, yeah, yeah. three times I was shipwrecked. Yeah, yeah. A night and a day, I have been in the deep. Yeah, come on. And the journey's often in perils of waters, in perils of robbers, in perils of own countrymen, in perils of Gentiles, in perils of the city. I want y'all to understand what he's saying. In shipwrecks, yeah. because he hasn't, he, hasn't, he hasn't even experienced the next shipwreck he's going to experience. The next shipwreck that he's going to experience is in Acts 28. Right. In Acts 28, that's when he experienced that last shipwreck. And it was, and he was out there, and he, and he finally got to the land. And that's what I talk about with the snake bin. The viper, and he's just standing there, nothing happened. That's the power of God. But Paul knew how to persevere through pain. So when you're being flogged by somebody, whipped by somebody, yeah. and you just feel like, have you ever feel like you're being whooped in the spirit? Just feel like somebody just whooping you? Though they're really not, but you just feel like the enemy is just whooping you and whooping you and whooping you. Like, why? Why I'm going through this? Why I got to experience this? Why this trouble? Why does it happen to me? That's because God is maturing you. Somebody how out, he's maturing me. He's growing me. That's why the Bible says, after you have suffered a little while, I will settle you. I will establish you, but only after you've been through something that these things will occur. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. It's going to form. It won't prosper. But the perils of Gentiles, he said, my own countrymen, because in order to get to certain places, he had to go through certain lands to get there. And there was robbers in certain lands that were just waiting on, a, on, a, on somebody to pray on. Yeah. And so he knew that. Yeah, yeah. And that's what he's talking about. He said, then the next wreck, and on and on, and all these things that affecting all this, all this, all this problem. <laughs> In pain that he experienced. Right. But he still. 
pressed for God. Yes, How many are still pressing for God? Yes. That was my favorite player, my favorite athlete. I used to idolize when I was a kid. And I idolized him, well, not really a teenager, I would say, because we were only a few years before. But I watched him and I idolized Ray Lewis. I watched him one day on, on TV and I was watching him talking. Ray Lewis, he's a very godly man. He loves God. He always preaches. And he said, real passionate behind what he do. He said this during his workout. They was taping him working out. He got to like the 50th sit-up. And he said, no, the pain just started. I got to keep going. Come on, come on, come on. Certain things don't happen in your life right off because the pain just started he said you're not really working out until you really get into the pain and you feel the pain he said but you got to push past the pain in your mind you got to learn to press towards the mark and press even though you're in pain you got to learn to press through those things press through the drama press through the hurt Somebody say, I'm pressing. You got to press through it. Because the pain is going to come. The pain is going to come. It's going to be a hindrance, but you got to learn to press through it. That's what he was saying. He said, man, this just started. We got to keep going. And the people that were working out with him, they just looked at him like he was crazy. Like, <laughs> But you got to learn to press through the pain and keep going for Christ. So Paul, mm -hmm. though all these things would happen. Come on, come on. Yeah, yeah. Now he's still pressing for God. There you go. Right. Well, 39 times. Stoned. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All those times. Come on, come on. But he's still pressed for God. He said, I got up and I kept pressing for God. You gotta learn how to keep persevering for Christ. Because when you persevere for Christ, a blessing is going to come your way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But a lot of us wait for this manifestation crap. But I'm telling you right now, don't wait for that. That ain't going to happen. Nothing ain't just going to fall in your lap like that. You got to work for it. You got to push for it. You got to run for it. Tell somebody I'm running for Christ. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we just got into pain already want a blessing. No, that ain't how it works. You got to go through it to get to it. Sometimes I'm out on the railroad like this, walking on those rocks, walking half a mile, a mile on those rocks. But I'm thanking God at the same time because what encourages me is Apostle Paul that I watched him and I read about all the things that he's done. And man, greater is he that is in you than he who is in the world. But he pressed through pain. He pressed through his situation. The Jews plotted to kill him one time. They was waiting for him outside the gates in Corinth. He said, oh my God. Thank God for the disciples that were there with him. They lowered him down in a basket. And he got away. But there are some people that's plotting against you. They don't want to see you succeed. They don't want to see you grow. They don't want to see you come to Christ. They don't want to see you grow in Christ. They don't want to see you running for Christ. They don't want to see you doing things, doing amazing things for God. But they want to take you out. Because remember, the enemy don't want nobody that's broke. Somebody don't have nothing. He wants somebody that has something. Somebody tell somebody, I got something. So come on. I got something. I got something and I'm running for God. Though I haven't apprehended, I'm still running for God. And some theologians believe it, some don't. It's still an argument within the theological community, but the Bible says in verse 12, I mean in chapter 12, verse 1 through 4, he said, I knew a man. Yeah. Whether in the spirit. That's it, that's it. Or out of the spirit. Yeah. Now the debate is whether he was stoned at this point in time, just being stoned near to death or not. But at one point in time, he went to heaven. He said, I went to the third heaven. Because there's three levels of heaven. And he went to the third heaven. Somebody say in pain. God gave him revelation in pain. See, things don't happen just to happen. 
when things happen, God is working something out of you. Stop complaining about what you're going through. And be glad about it. Tell somebody I'm glad about it. That's why I love to say this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. I'm glad in it. I don't know what's to come today. I don't know as soon as I step out those doors what's going to happen. But whatever happened, if it's bad, I'm ready for it. If it's tough, I'm ready for it. If it's hell, I'm ready for it. Because I know one thing. Count it all joy. Somebody say, count it all joy. I'm not worried about the enemy. Count it all joy. I'm not worried about the devil. Count it all joy. I'm not worried about my haters. Count it all joy. I'm not worried about my situation. Count it all joy. I'm not worried about my giant. Count it all But there was another man from Galilee. The Bible says that he experienced all kind of pain. The weight of the world was on his shoulders. Something happened when you persevere through pain. Breakthroughs begin to happen when you persevere. When you persevere through pain. When Jesus was on the cross, he was persevering through pain. 100% man, 100% God. Oh my God, but something happened on the cross of Calvary. Our sins, the weight of the world was on his shoulder. Our sins that he bore, a sinless man, he bore as a guilty man. For us, he looked down through the generations, Sister Rose. He saw you. He looked down through the generations, Minister Rose. He saw you. He looked down through the generations. Minister Diane, he saw you. He looked down to the generation. Sister Peggy, he saw you. He looked down to the generation. And he saw you eventually. But something about it. I thank God and I rejoice. Because I see myself on the cross of heaven. When he was nailed on the cross of heaven, he looked through the years. And he saw my sins. He saw my imperfections. He saw my downfall. He saw my mess. He saw my drama. He saw my craziness. And he said, I, if I, if I be lifted up, I'll draw on me. He was bruised. He was bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement of peace was upon him. And by his stripes, we are healed. We healed spiritually. Thank God. And he has healed us spiritually. Thank God that he has saved our souls. Thank God that he has made us whole. Thank God that he has given us remission of sins. Thank God for being an advocate. My God. God has restored us. And we have been healed in the spirit. God is amazing. Woo, the power of God. But you gotta persevere. Yeah, if you won't go what God has for you, you gotta learn to persevere. Yeah. You gotta walk through that mess. Come on, come on. Not even in your healing process, you're gonna have to walk through it. It's gonna hurt sometimes, but you gotta walk through it. You gotta walk through it. I remember I had my, my stomach surgery. They took out some of my intestines. I came back to work. And I stopped and I called her. I said, hey, HR, I said, hey man, I'm ready to come back to work. He said, You sure? Already? I said, yeah, I got bills out. <laughs> I said, I got bills. <laughs> they ain't gonna stop because I'm sick. <laughs> I said, I'm a man. Yeah. And I gotta learn to push. There you go, there you go. Even in pain. There you go, he said, all right, well, okay, you say you are, all right. He said, well, I'm gonna see you. I wouldn't expect you back already, but I'm gonna send you to our doctor and you can come on to eat the thing if you pass. <laughs> I made sure I passed. She was pressing on my stomach. Black Panther. 
Yeah. Jack and Bowie. Yeah. It was awesome testimony. They said nobody knew he was sick. Yeah. They say all the time he just like everything normal. They say we knew he lost a little weight, was losing weight, but but he just smiling and talking. Come on, come on. It's something about when you have Christ oh, in your life. Yeah. You're oppressed through the pain. Yeah. Yeah. You're oppressed through all your broken emotions. Yeah. You're beating up hard. Yeah. You've been through a battlefield. Oh. People don't know your story. Yeah. You've been abused. Oh. You've been, you've been uh, uh, kicked out, abandoned. But look at you now. Somebody say, look at me now. Look at me now. <laughs> I'm still standing. Yeah, I'm and that's how Paul was. Look at me now. Yeah. I have not yet to apprehend. Yeah. That's it. That's it. I never got it. I never will get it. He said, oh, wretched man that I am. That I am. He said, but I'm pressing for yeah. For Christ. Yeah. Even when I'm in pain and hurt. Make fun of me and people don't like me, and I lose. That was his friends that wanted to kill him. Come on, come on. They went to school with Paul. He had levels of degrees, but they still wanted to kill him because he was running for Christ. That's it, that's it, and they abused him, and they and they neglected him, and they and they whipped him, and they scourged him, and they hurt him every single way. They they, they, they beat that man to death. Yeah. They would make fun of him because at times he had a speech impediment because he'd been yeah. beaten so much. But he still ran. That's why Paul said, follow me. That's our apostle. The apostle of the Gentiles. Follow me. Why? Follow Christ. Will you follow him? The doors of the church open. Will you follow him? Amen. Thank Will you so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe to this channel and join our online Christian family. Tithes, offerings, and donations can be made via Cash App at dollar sign tvmbc or by mail at true vine missionary baptist church 1407 grove street houston texas 77020 thank you so much and have a blessed day